Hi, my name is Giancarlo, and I've always been fascinated by space travel and exploring other planets. And I'm Jessica. We're explainers here at the New York Hall of Science, socially distanced, of course. And living in such a vast universe, I can only imagine what it's like and how it's even possible to literally be out of this world. But that's exactly why we're here. Today, we're going to talk about one way you can achieve outer space flight. So let's get started with a question. What is flight? Well, we define it as the controlled takeoff and landing of an object, animal, or craft. And flight can help us travel in many ways. Lighter than air flight describes how blimps and hot air balloons float, and heavier than air flight explains how planes soar through the air. But today, we want to explore how rockets can fly. And to do that, we'll focus on outer space flight, or the flight that takes place outside of the Earth's atmosphere. And to demonstrate how that works, we'll be using this bottle to act as our rocket. But before we begin, we suggest not to try this activity at home. We have lots of training and special safety protocols for us here at NISI. We'll also need the help of rubbing alcohol spray, our hair dryer, and an igniter which is attached to our launch pad. And just like how cars need gas to move, we can't have our rocket fly without any fuel. I don't have any rocket fuel handy, but for this activity, we'll be putting in two sprays of rubbing alcohol inside of our bottle. It'll act as our rocket fuel for this activity. But wait, we can't just leave it like that. If we want our rocket to fly, we need a combustion. We have liquid alcohol, which is flammable, but if we need a more combustive reaction, we would need a heat source. So let's use this hair dryer to heat up the inside of our bottle to turn our liquid alcohol into a vapor. That way, our fuel just doesn't catch on fire, but it'll burst into flames. And all we're missing now is our reaction. Let's place our bottle to our launch pad. By pressing this trigger, we'll create a spark to ignite the fuel inside of our bottle so it can launch all the way up. You ready, Jess? I'm so ready. Let's start the countdown from five, four, three, two, one. Whoa, did you see that? Let's take a closer look at how it all went down. What we see is the spark igniting the alcohol vapor, which acted as our fuel. As the fuel burned, you were left with carbon dioxide, or CO2, as our byproduct. As the hot gas expanded, it filled up the entire bottle, leaving nowhere for it to go but through the opening on the bottom. And this is where Newton's third law comes in. We use Isaac Newton's laws of motion to describe how objects move in the universe. And his third law of motion states that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. As an example of how Newton's third law works, here I have this inflated balloon. Notice how I didn't tie up at the end of it. If we're pointing the opening of the balloon towards my left, which direction do you think it'll go if I let the balloon go? If you answered it'll go to the right, you're absolutely right. Whoa, it went all over the place. But as it left my hand, it mainly flew to the right. So what happened? The air inside of the balloon escaped through the only opening which was pointing to the left. So that's our action, the air moving left. And Newton says that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So if the air is exiting to the left, then the opposite of that air moving left would be our balloon flying to the right. Let's connect that back to our bottle rocket. The CO2 that was created as a result of the spark pushed downwards to the only opening. And if the CO2 pressing down is our action, our equal and opposite reaction would be the bottle rocket going upwards. But wait, what does this have to do with real rockets? Well, for starters, we're using rubbing alcohol, which acts as our rocket fuel. Oh yeah, and we got to ignite a fire. Don't real rockets have that too? Exactly, but rockets don't only produce carbon dioxide, they create tons of exhaust smoke. And since it's pushing out the bottom of the rocket, we have the action of the smoke and flames going downwards. All oh, right. And thanks to Newton's third law, the opposite of all that smoke pushing downwards sends the rocket going all the way up into the atmosphere and into space. Rockets create a reaction large enough to send them sky high. And side note, if you're wondering what it's like to be in space, you could ask Dr. Patricia Cowings. Not only was she one of the first American women to be trained as an astronaut by NASA, but she also studied the effects of gravity and outer space on the human body. She invented the Autogenic Feedback Training Exercise, or AFTE, which is a training program that helped astronauts have more control over their bodily functions and better adjust to being in space. Even though she hasn't been to space herself, 
It's thanks to her that astronauts are able to travel to and occupy space for long periods of time without ever having to worry about getting sick. Today we got to create a rocket out of an empty bottle. What are some other ways you can launch something really high up or far away with adult supervision of course? Like say a slingshot, an Alka-Seltzer rocket, a straw, or even Coke and Mentos. Share your ideas with us by tagging us on Instagram at ExplainerTV. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.